Aloha, and welcome to the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. I am your host, Gwendolyn Harris. This show every week will showcase some of our amazing local artists, and there are many. There will be from time to time a special guest, so make sure you stay tuned. Now, as a lover of music and growing up playing music all the way through college, I am very happy to have this special guest on the show today. This gentleman is one of the most and amazing versatile saxophonists in pop, soul, and contemporary jazz. He grew up in a well-known musical family here in Hawaii and has played with Al Jarreau, James Ingram, Rick Braun, Peter White, Oleda Adams, Kenny Loggins, Jeffrey Osborne, Bobby Caldwell, Johnny Mathis, and Herbie Han Hancock, just to name a few. He has played in many jazz festivals around the world, including the largest one in the world, the Jakarta International Java Jazz Festival in Indonesia. Let's welcome Mr. Michael Paolo to the show. Aloha. Aloha, Michael. How are you? <laughs> I am so glad to have you on the show. Well, thank you uh, for letting me be your inaugural guest. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you're the one that really started this, all this with me here with the smooth jazz here in Hawaii. So I thank you. Now let's get straight down to business, okay? Let's get business. straight down to business. All right, let's get business. <laughs> <laughs> now, as we know, you grew up here in Hawaii, and you came and you come from a very musical family with your dad, Rene Paolo. So how was that growing up in, in that household? I can just imagine. Well, ba basically, you know, with the music everywhere, right? And when we have we have parties, the whole family would entertain, so we never lack entertainment. And, and you know, my dad would give piano lessons. We have students come in and out, and so so I grew up with music everywhere, you know. And and um, early on, you know, my siblings, I mean, they were playing the Beatles and all those old rock bands and and Sinatra and everything. So I heard it all, and and. Um, a lot of people surprised that I didn't really play music. I didn't start till I was fifteen and years old in high school. Mm -hmm. But but growing up in that environment really helped out a lot. Wow! So what made you pick the saxophone to play? Just by by chance, really. Um, I went to like I said, I didn't start till I was fifteen. I went to St. Louis High School uh, there, and I, I decided to play join the the band on a whim because uh, it was an elective. <laughs> Of course, uh -huh. you know, in, in, in high school, you could choose physical education or band, right? So the first semester, I chose PE, and I got tired of running, because <laughs> that's all they did was run. Uh -huh. So I said, like, forget this. So um, a lot of my friends, yeah, man, you should take band, because it's an easy A. You know, the teacher was very lenient. So I said, okay, so I signed up for band. And um, fortunately, uh, I didn't start on the saxophone. I, 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 he put me on the oboe. Oh you know, wow! That little big charmer instrument, and it, it was terrible, right? But <laughs> but I had to play it in symphony band. I learned how to play, it. and mm -hmm. finally I just got so fed up. I said, "Look, if you, I don't, you don't let me play something else, I'm going to quit." <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> so, wow. So anyway, so, so he said, "Well, you know, we're kind of short on instruments. If you can borrow an instrument from somebody, you know, I'll let you play, right?" <laughs> so my my uncle had a saxophone, and, and my my dad's younger brother. So I, I called him up. I said, hey, can I buy your saxophone? I want to, you know, try to learn, learn playing a band. He, and, and he said, yes. And um, so that's how I got started. So I, I got the saxophone. I, I, I played it, and I fell in love. And uh, that was the second half of my freshman year. And I practiced all summer long. I was so enamored with the saxophone, right? And every day I drove my siblings nuts. You know, <laughs> they're pounding on the walls and every day. But, but I, I literally practiced every day. I, I couldn't let the horn down. So by the time I went back from my sophomore year, mm -hmm. first, my sophomore year, I mean, first year in all the band. And, and that was, you know, from all that hard work over the summer. So. Now, what other instruments do you play? I know you play more than just the saxophone. Well, I play the flute. And, of course, I play a little, little piano, you know, okay. too. You know, um, I tried to learn the ukulele, but yeah, I gave up. <laughs> See, that's what I played. I started out playing the clarinet, and uh -huh. I played the flute as well. I played the flute all the way through college. So, 
Yeah. 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 No, my mom, my mom loved the clarinet. She said, someone should play the clarinet. And I had a really good clarinet, but, but I just couldn't get used to the, the, the octave changes. I mean, you know, it's, it's different. A key, right. when you go to lower register, the, the fingering for, for G is actually a C. And, and so I, I said, forget that. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> now, from 1975 to 1979, you played with the Hawaii pop rock band Kalapana. How did you get started yeah. and connected with them? Well, I was playing, after I graduated from high school, I was playing different bands and shows in Waikiki. Um, and, and, of course, I made a reputation really quickly, and I was playing with everybody. So when Kalapana, they made that historic first record, and it, it was a big hit record, and they had a session saxophonist when they made the record from L.A., uh, who was great, Jackie Kelso. And, and so when they came back to Hawaii to do their big premiere concert at the Waikiki Shell, mm -hmm. I think it was like a record of 11,000 people, um, they needed a saxophone player uh, because of the, the, the work on the album. So... I guess they heard about me. They, the manager gave me a call, say, "Hey, look, you know, um, you want to play sax for this concert?" And you know, of course, I, everybody knew who they were because it was such a big hit. So I said, "I said, yeah, you know." And it was kind of baptism by fire because I met the band. I never, I never met met them before. So I met the band. They flew in that week of the concert, and I, I met them. And I don't even remember if I, I rehearsed. They just gave me the music. Say, "Hey, I learned this stuff," you know. Uh -huh. And then. Uh, then I had to play in front of 11,000 people, just like cold. Wow. And it was, a, it was an experience. And I had never done that before. Of course, I was just playing in Waikiki show bands and all that. So, um, you know, that was a, a great experience. And that kind of launched me. And from that point, I moved to the mainland with them. I actually gave up a scholarship to go to college in, in North Texas and um, decided to just go hit the road with them. And... Um, you know, I learned everything. We were in the studio making records. We were writing songs, you know, traveling, touring, everything. So, so I kind of, um, you know, learned, learned uh, on the road, you know. Mm -hmm. so, so that was a great experience. And, um, you know, I, over the years, I've, I've always kept in contact. And unfortunately, Milani, the lead, lead singer, um, passed away recently. But I learned that it was Milani that actually got me in the band. Um, he had actually seen, seen me play at, at the local club that they used to play at mm -hmm. on, on jazz jams on Sunday, right? And I used mm -hmm. to go play. And, and uh, I used to do a thing with two saxophones, like Ross on Will and Chris and stuff. And, and when, when it came time to get a sax player, Moani said, hey, how about that guy that goes to the jam sessions and he plays two saxophones? He's pretty cool. And um, <laughs> so that's how, that's how I got the gig. <laughs> you know? wow. And it's funny, because, you know, going, going deeper, when I moved to L.A. in 1981, and I was playing around different clubs, and um, I was actually playing with the members from the band Rufus, Bobby Watson, Andre Fisher, Max, uh, Max Ann Lewis, and uh, Tony Maiden. So I was fortunate they, they, they found me, and they asked me to play with this band, and we were playing at, at Josephine's club in, in uh, Studio City. And I was just talking about this with my wife, because it was, it was Al Duro's birthday yesterday, by the way, you know, my mentor. and. Um, so Al used to come in to Josephinus and we were playing in, playing in the band uh, there. And I remember when he would walk in and everybody was like, wow, who out your roads in the corner over there? And it looked like a big deal, right? <laughs> so, 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 but little did I know, uh, he was actually checking me out. Wow. So um, when it came time, you know, a few, few months later, when it came time that he, had, he needed a full-time saxophonist, uh, I mean, my name had gotten around and stuff. But, but when they finally said, hey, we know this guy from Hawaii and, and, and stuff, and he, he already knew who I was. So that when I met him at the first rehearsal, he looked at me smiling and he said, hey, man, I've been checking you out. <laughs> wow. So, so it's amazing how you get seen, you know, like that jam session on Sunday. I got, I got the gig with Kalapana because the, the lead singer saw me there and playing in, at a little club in Studio City, Josephinus, mm -hmm. you know, and, and Al Jarreau saw me play there, and, and that's how I got discovered by him. So you so, never know um, who's watching you. Never know. No, 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 you never know. You never know. Now, in 1988, you recorded your first major solo release, One Passion, on MCA Records, 
which you are critically acclaimed as one of the most influential recording contemporary jazz artists. Now, for people, when we talk about jazz and we talk about smooth jazz, people, some people don't really know the, the difference. So when we talk about contemporary jazz, smooth jazz, and our alternative jazz, what, what is the difference? And how did you get into playing smooth jazz and contemporary jazz? Well, you know, jazz is such a broad broad uh, idiom, you know, I mean, it can, it, and, and it's got to the point where basically if you improvise over a music bass, you can call that jazz, mm -hmm. because jazz is all about improvising, right? Mm -hmm. um, so so in, in musical styles today, I mean, you, you get you, the, the old style, you had swing, you had bebop, you know, you had fusion, and then you had hip hop, and then you had R&B, and, and then all these different idioms, and con contemporary jazz you know, in, in these phases, people, they had to come up with some kind of name just to market it, put it mm -hmm. that way, right? So we went, we went from new adult contemporary, uh, contemporary jazz to, to smooth jazz to from quiet storm. I mean, all the formats, they try to identify, you know, what the instrumental music of the day was. So right. it's basically just a label that they can market. So today, smooth jazz has become uh, um, a melding of really pop, R&B, and, and jazz, mm -hmm. you know, so where basically you, you, you take popular songs and R&B songs, and then you cover them, right, and then you make it an instrumental, and then you, you solo over it. So that's basically what smooth jazz is, and, and it tends to be more groove-oriented, right? So as far as widespread appeal, that's why it got really popular, is because, because a lot of the artists were recording songs that, that the baby boomers, you know, that, that <laughs> love the format. They mm -hmm. recognize the songs, mm -hmm. you know, Junior Walker and, 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 you know, I mean, Jeffrey Osborne songs, whatever, all these, these standards. Um, so they would record it instrumentally, rearrange it, and, and then it would become popular. So, and that's what really smooth jazz is. Wow. Now, I learned a lesson, and I love smooth jazz. I really <laughs> didn't start listening to it until when I was deployed is when I really started listening to it back in 2005. And then, of yeah, course, 2007, yeah. when I came here, and you started me with this, Michael Apollo, <laughs> <laughs> with, this, with this smooth jazz here in Hawaii, so started years, listening to it. 12, 12 years, 12 years ago, you know, I, I started doing shows at, at, in the Waikiki Nation showroom. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and, and how that got started, actually, there was a, a smooth jazz station, Coral, right, right? in Hawaii, yep. and I I was riding in the car with my uncle, who, who's also uh, a smooth jazz fan, right? Mm -hmm. and, he, and, and all of a sudden, I'm riding in this car, and, and Boney James is playing, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I, told, I looked at my uncle, I said, wow, this is Boney James. I said, yeah, and, and he goes, yeah, that's the jazz station here, right? So I said, whoa, there's a jazz station that plays Boney James? He said, yeah. <laughs> And I, so the light went off. I said, wow, they got radio here, and you got to have, you know, you got to bring the artist in, right? And um, mm -hmm. so... That, that's how it started. So I, I started bringing them in, and, and uh, you know, for a long time I had a great opportunity, and I, and I did so many jazz concerts over the years, which many, many of them you went to, attended. Of course. You know, so, <laughs> but, but, you know, and then, then, of course, we all know the Blue Note came in, as, and, which is a great big jazz club and, and iconic. And um, so they started actually booking a lot of artists that, that I was, you know, w working with. So unfortunately, that made it more difficult for me to do my, my shows in Hawaii, which is okay, because for the fans there, now they have some place they can go on a regular basis. Right. And they can see all the great artists, you know. So I'm glad I started the trend, and, and now, now it's something that, that it's a regular situation, and it's great for the fans over there. Well, we miss you, but we have to go on a quick break. So everybody, okay. just stand by, and we'll be right back. Aloha, and welcome to At the Crossroads. I'm your host, Keisha King. I'm live at 5 every Wednesday, where we have entertaining and educational conversations that are real and relevant, both here in Hawaii and across the globe. I'll see you at the crossroads. Aloha. Aloha and mabuhay. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch, 
Uh, for our mission of empowerment, we aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming salamat po, mabuhay, and aloha. <laughs> aloha, and welcome back to the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection with my special guest, Michael Paolo, Hawaii's own Michael Paolo. Welcome yeah. back to the show, Michael. Thank you for being I'm here. I'm the first one. Yes, you are the first one. You are the first one. You are the first one. So prior um, to going on break, we were talking about uh, the contemporary jazz, smooth jazz. But this question, next question that I have for you is you just completed your 11th album, Beautiful Day. Right. What can we expect to hear from this album versus your other albums? Well... When you get older, you try to you tend to get simpler. Okay. <laughs> and, and you know, like I said, went to I went to all the idioms of jazz, and at one point, fusion jazz was was a big thing, like like Jeff Warber, you know, those kind of groups, and and the Yellow Jackets and all that. You know, so when you're young, you want to do all this stuff and riffs and, and lines and, and get complicated and everything. But then, as the older you get, basically, you just want a groove <laughs> and mm -hmm. a melody, right? And, and so. So this, this this record is is that it's it, it's really it's a reflection of, of all my different influences and you know I I did a bunch of cover songs you know I did uh, actually a song by Sting and then um, your song Elton John El Toro arrangement um, so Europa got the Bobby area that mm -hmm. was always, always um, um, so so half the record are, are cover songs that that basically you know I was enjoy playing. Um, and then I also composed, you know, different different songs, um, and and you know, most of them are just really a, a simple groove with a melody, mm -hmm. and um, so it's a it's a very accessible record. <laughs> it's not it's, like my mom said; it's not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we're going to have a special treat from you today. Are you going to play for us today? Yeah, you know, um, Grover Washington was one of my influences, and and um, you know. I just I just came back from Java Jazz Festival and uh, you know hung out with my good friend Harvey Mason, right? Mm -hmm. Great world class drummer. So um, you know, one of the great things is that you know Harvey actually played on on the original hit of for Gogo, uh, Mr. Mister Magic, it was, which is a song I'm going to play. And um, you know that's one of my, the thrills that I've enjoyed in my career is moving up to LA and actually getting to meet, become friends, and play with all these superstar musicians that, that I only looked at the name on the record, you know, when I was growing up and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so that's pretty cool. And uh, I actually met Grover once. And, oh, wow. um, you know, I, yeah. I, 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 so, so that was a thrill for me because, you know, that guy was such a soulful player. And, um, you know, and like I said, uh, one of my influences growing up. So. So I want to play for you, uh, Mr. Magic. Okay. And that's one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <you're> right there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
See, now you have to come back to Hawaii and put on another concert. So for everybody that just saw him play, if you see Michael in concert, he is off the chain. He'll jump up on tables, chairs. So what you see is, is just very, it's very mellow. But you need to see Michael in concert. He is amazing. That was just a, that was just a sneak peek, a sneak peek of him. Yeah, you just had in the chair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you need to you really need to put on another show. Um Michael, thank you so much for that. And that kind of leads me into my next question. Your company Apollo Productions is involved in producing many jazz concerts in California and Hawaii, including the Temecula Wine Festival in California. You also produced the Pacific Rim Jazz Festival here in Hawaii and the Asian Heritage Jazz Festival. What are your future plans to make sure jazz does not die on the island? Well, I mean, uh, like I said, I'm going to keep trying to bring back my favorite artists. I mean, and, and, and of course, with the Blue Note there, it's not going to die. I mean, mm -hmm. you have all these great artists cir circulating through now. Um, and what I what I love about what they're doing is they're mixing it up. They're, they're bringing you know straight ahead people, different mm -hmm. kind of jazz. I mean, yep. got Shambu Shorty, and and so they, they they really have different different kind of genres coming in. You know, once in a while they have a pop act and all that and R and B and stuff. But but it's it's really cool that that you know every week they have something you can go check out, mm -hmm. right? And then and then of course they they're, they're giving a forum for a lot of the local jazz yes. guys to play there, Yes, you know, so which yes. is pretty cool. So, so, you know, that, I think that that's why it's, it's great, great environment for them, you know, to keep, keep, keep doing that. And, um, you know, who knows, maybe, you know, they've been wanting me to come out there and, and, and maybe do something with them. So, so we'll see what, what happens for the future. Well, I think, I think you should, <laughs> because yeah. like I, like but, I tell but, everyone, I, <laughs> I, might, I might do a smooth jazz stuff. <laughs> well, see, that's what, that's yeah. what you need to do, because uh, I get the question all the time. Is, yes, yeah. we, we need a smooth jazz festival, Michael. We need to talk. Yeah, so, so it's in the works. <laughs> we, 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 need, we need to talk. We need to talk, because yeah. we need but, one. You know, I've got my Temecula Wine and Music Festival coming up. Talk about that. Um, so our people that are, yeah. we have some people that are traveling to that. I have some friends that are actually going to that festival. So talk about that. Yeah. So it's, it's, you know, it's my 15th annual. I started it 15 years ago, 
Um, and basically, you know, I kind of, it was an offshoot from, from another festival I was involved with on the big island of, of, of Hawaii, um, the Dolphin Days Festival. Um, so, so I did that for about 14 years, and I, I brought so many great artists there and stuff. Unfortunately, that ended. But when that ended, ended I, I kind of started my own event in, in California. Um, so this is our 15th year. And, you know, I've, I've made it about, part, part of it is about great music, of course. Um, I've had a lot of great artists over the years. But also, since Temecula is a hotbed for wineries, um, we also make it into a unique wine casing experience. So we have what they call winery row. You can just kind of go from each booth and, and sample wines from all over the world, mm -hmm. you know. And, of course, we all know that wine and jazz We'll go well together, right? Yes, it Drink does. Wine. <laughs> so, so that whole concept is really great. Um, and then, you know, we have some local vendors and everything. But, but um, like I said, we always, you know, raise money for local charities. Um, you know, so we raise money for different organizations like the Shriners Hospital for Children, All From the Heart, Wounded Warriors. Um, and uh, currently, we're, we're benefiting, we're helping out the Boys and Girls Club. You know, so because, you know, it's important for kids. Uh, to have somewhere to go after school, you know, in this, these days, parents are so busy working, both mom and dad working and stuff. Mm -hmm. When they come out of school, you know, they sometimes they get into trouble and everything. So the Boys and Girls Club is a great organization because it gives kids somewhere to go and do have activities and hang out and not get in trouble. <laughs> so awesome. I'm all for that. Yeah. So if so, we have uh, some people from Hawaii... Yeah. If we have some people, which I have some friends that are going, but if we have some yeah. people from Hawaii that want to come to the Temecula uh, Wine and Jazz Festival, where would they go to get tickets? I just go to uh, TemeculaWineAndMusicFestival.com or else our favorite place, TIX.com. Okay. That's my ticket. Yeah, same, same like the shows in Hawaii. Okay. Go to TIX and just key in my name or whatever, the festival, and then, uh, you know, it'll come up. And, um, yeah, tickets just went on sale this week. So. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So awesome. I'm excited. I actually, actually, uh, you know, along with the jazz people that, that we have, I got actually special guest who Rochema is going to play. Oh, wow. You know, um, yeah, and oh, Patrice Russian. Oh, uh, Patrice, okay. Yeah, Forget Me Not and everything. And uh, I'm, I'm working on a, a legendary blues singer, uh, jazz singer, Barbara Morrison. So I have many different artists appearing. And, and, uh, but, but, you know, this year one of our headliners is the band Pablo Cruz. Um, so, you know, I'm from the 70s and 80s, and kind of like in the vein of, of Kalapana, you know, we used to tour, and they were always on the same circuit, you know, we were hitting the same same venues and stuff, so I always loved their music, and um, so I, I called up the band leader, Corey uh, Lysero, and um, nice guy, he said, oh yeah, we'll come down and help you out and, and play, so it's going to be a fun, fun day, yeah. Oh, wow. I wish I could make it, I wish I was trying to make it this year. So I'm, I'm, putting on on my, I'm putting it on my list for next year, but I know you also yeah. have, um, I know you also do a lot of uh, concerts with the Westin. Yeah, um, yeah. we call it Grooves at the, at the Westin. Uh -huh. And uh, we actually, we, we, uh, we just had um, guitarist Greg Chiquiso, and then prior to that I had my good friend Peter White. Um, we had a bunch of people. But, but this next show coming up April 6th, um, I got... DW3, I mean, um, they, they, one of the biggest R&B party bands. They've on the Dave Cross crews. They're everywhere now. They're really getting popular um, and stuff. So, so they're going to be playing along with uh, Gail Johnson from, from Jazz and Pink. Uh -huh. And, and this, I love this girl. Her name's Grace Kelly. Like the actress, and I've seen right? her. Uh -huh. Yeah. I've and seen her. Little Korean girl, saxophonist, and she's amazing. You know, and, and, and so now she's singing, she sings, and she plays and everything. So yeah, I, I have fun putting together these combinations of artists that, that nobody thinks about and stuff. So, so I got DW3 we're playing with Gail Johnson and, and Grace Kelly, and they're all going to jam together. Oh, wow. So wow. Yeah. That's wow. coming up. Yeah. Well, Michael, I thank you so much for being on my inaugural show. <laughs> 
<laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. I Again. hope there will be many more. <laughs> oh, yes, I'm sure there will. And for everybody, all the viewers that are watching, Michael Polo is the one that really inspired me in this smooth jazz um, and what I do and trying to keep it alive and, and to know about artists here on the island and elsewhere. So again, I thank you, Michael, for being on the show. Thank you. Great job, Gwen. Thank you. Say hi to your beautiful wife for me and kiss the grandbaby who I have never met I, but I always see. I will. <laughs> okay. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you.